I know over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of communication about a lot of changes and a lot of decisions. And I'm sure that's only going to continue for the foreseeable future. Decisions about housing, about instruction, about budget, about testing, you name it. Um, and I, so I thought today, rather than go through a list of all those different kinds of areas, I'd offer some perspective on some of the guiding principles that we've been using to help both prioritize those, those decisions and address them individually. The first principle is personal health. This is a time of a pandemic. Uh, there's arguably nothing more important than individual's health. And individual and personal are the key words here. Each of us has our own individual situation, our own individual medical history, uh, history of those around us who we live with and interact with daily. Uh, we all have our own set of considerations. And we want to make sure that each of us has as much freedom to respect our own individual personal health considerations as possible. Now, we're a, a big organization and there are some demands that are gonna be put on individuals among us that may not be your first choice. But where possible, we're gonna to hope to allow as much choice and as much flexibility for individuals as possible so that each of us can think about our own personal health situation and how best to uh, maintain our own personal safe health environment. The best example of that probably is the instructional continuity work that's been going on. Lots of conversations, a planning group, and then discussions with all kinds of others across the campus about instruction for the fall. And early on that group came to the realization that regardless of what happens in the fall, there are gonna be some people, some students, some TAs, some faculty members who just don't feel they personally can go back to a classroom situation. So how do we manage that? How do we, how do we respect that personal health consideration? Well, the strategy that's being discussed now is kind of a default to remote instruction. In a remote instruction world, everyone can stay in their space. It isn't ideal in terms of pedagogy and all kinds of ways, but it, it puts this notion of personal health at a focus point. Then once we get to a, an understanding that personal health is important and remote is a good way to manage that, then we can have a conversation about what variability do we allow beyond that? Which classes, which courses, which studios, which experiences we may want to make face-to-face. -face. And in those situations, how do we again ensure as much as we can personal health? Uh, that's a guiding principle that we allow, I've now been applying to as many of our decisions as possible. And it's arguably, again, the most important of these principles. As I've shared before, we have a number of groups working on planning for the fall. Um, and each of them in their own domains by topic, uh, testing and tracing, instruction, research, and so forth. Uh, we have one group, Public Health, that has this overarching perspective on the entire campus uh, as we look at the fall. They've promulgated a set of phased steps, much like the governor, that we, were, we are following now as we think about the fall. But importantly, they've also been charged with reviewing all the other products from all the other working groups. Uh, with the hope that we have an independent eye on health and safety, because again, that's prime in all of this. Now, personal health leads directly to a second principle, and that's community health. Community health means lots of things. For us here at Riverside, um, it means thinking about all of the participants in our university, and how do we collectively help to ensure that we all stay healthy. So. There are some activities that simply need to remain on campus and have been actually through the last few weeks, we've talked before. We're starting now to ramp up our research activity. And in preparation for that, we brought back maintenance and, and uh, other service workers even last week. As more people return to campus, a best way to, to preserve the total community health is for not all of us to come back to campus. It's actually in our collective best interest for those who can to continue to work from home because that allows those who need to have to be on campus a safer environment. So community health is the second principle. How do we think about all the participants 
and UCR's activities in a way that makes the collective as healthy as possible. And the two certainly are intertwined. Um, there are some people who can work from home and others who can't. Uh, the, the, the options for choice are limited, more than limited for some than for others, but those two principles start to guide some of these bigger decisions. Now, community health has other aspects to it, for sure. We know about face covering, we know about physical distancing, we know about sanitation, we know about uh, contact. We know about those things that as individuals we can do to keep both our health, ourselves safe and healthy, but also do the same for, for the rest of the community. Um, we as an institution are looking at more institutional kinds of, of activities for the fall uh, in terms of community health. How do we think about testing for small groups or for large groups of people? Um, we're already looking at sewage lines and whether or not we can test sewage on the campus to see where hot spots might occur. Uh, there's a set of, of institutional activities, but there's also a set, of course, of, of individual and personal activities that contribute to community health. Um, the, the next kind of principle I'd like to talk about is the principle of incremental decision making. We have uh, some institutions around the country, you've heard, have said, we're going to be totally back in business in the fall like nothing ever happened. Um, we're not in a mind of making that kind of all-in uh, statement. I think, it's, um, I think it's difficult to do. I would even suggest maybe it's naive in some regards. Um, and we're going to be much more incremental, which may lead us to look a little more conservative on a scale of 1 to 10 when 10 is everything's going to be back to normal in the fall like nothing ever happened is a 10. We're probably a 3 or a 4 at Riverside. Um, if, if you're too primary guiding principles are public, or personal health rather, and community health, then that should rightfully, I think, drive you to a more conservative perspective. Um, and that conservative perspective leads to a series of studied, incremental, and wisely made decisions. So our first uh, real decision in that regard was to, to start to re-ramp up research. Uh, the the guiding, uh, guidelines went out for that last week. Uh, faculty, staff, others across the campus are beginning that research ramp up process by lab, by activity, by project um, in, a, in a pretty stepwise fashion. As that happens, we start to think about other supporting activities like maintenance, custodian, and the rest. And it prepares us for a series of conversations for the fall. If, in fact, the, uh, the earlier example I offered from instruction, remote becomes pretty much the, the standard, then there's a series of conversations about what exceptions do we have to the standard? Which advanced laboratory classes, which studio classes, which groups of students, which groups of faculty members, which instructors, which TAs? Those become individual and incremental decisions on top of our initial base decision. So personal health, community health, uh, a reliance on incremental decision making guide a lot of what is, is happening now. So what happens next? Instruction, of course, continues to be a center piece of all of our planning because it involves so many people on the campus, not least our 25,000 students. Um, instruction then drives conversations about housing and what demand, what need do we have for groups of students or, or others to be housed on the campus. We've already made lots of plans are planning rather about um, the capacity under different kinds of safer conditions, but the instructional program will drive uh, much of that. I know a lot of you have been uh, visiting the COVID website to keep up with all that's been going on on campus. I want to let you know that we've now turned from updates about COVID to more of an orientation toward the fall, and there's a new website, Campus Return. Please go there and return often because each of these incremental steps as we move back to a more normal campus life will be shared there and opportunities for comment as, as well. Campus return.